Again, thank you so much for uh, being a part uh, of this opportunity. Um, you know, we are sharing these videos with young people throughout uh, the city of Milwaukee, state of Wisconsin, and nationally as well through our through our brand, Pep Nation, uh, to show, uh, you know, young people and young adults and just people in general, you know, the type of professions and professionals that exist, um, you know, here in our world. And uh, we thank you for, for being a part of this. Um, Sylvia, if you would, uh, could you tell us your first and last name, please? Sure, my name is Sylvia Wilson. Very good, Sylvia. And, and Sylvia, a pleasure, you know, again, to have you. And uh, where are you from, Sylvia? Um, I was born and raised in Milwaukee, okay. Wisconsin. So, yeah. Very good. And what part of Milwaukee? So the early part of my growing up was on 35th and Galena. Um, we actually stayed on 35th and then on 36th because my grandmother stayed around the corner. Um, and then in my middle school and high school years, moved to 48th and Locust. Okay. Okay. Very good, very good. And then um, in that uh, that time period, where what grade school did you attend in middle school? Um, so grade school, I went to, uh, well, I started off in a private school um, called VCY. It was Voice of Christian Youth. I found out later that my grandmother actually paid to send me there for, for my early years of elementary school. Then I transitioned into Sherman Elementary. Um, and then in middle school, went to uh, Morse Middle School, Samuel Morse. Okay, very good, yeah. very good. Two, two schools that have come up in previous interviews cool. as well. So we got some <laughs> alum that are part of this group. Yep. Um, while you were there, you recall any uh, activities that you did, any sports, any, any you know, uh, uh, any, any extracurricular activities that you're involved yeah. in? Yeah, wow. So I was a pretty, I guess you could say, a quiet, shy kid, kept to myself a lot. Um, I guess you could say I was a little bit nerdy, got teased a lot in middle school. Um, in elementary school, I don't remember a lot of activities. Um, I just remember going on this great field trip um, to Camp Upham. Um, so we went to Upham Woods and spent like about a week there. That was one of the greatest experiences like to this day. It still makes me, still makes me smile just to think about it. It was my first camp experience. Um, in middle school, um, I did take part in peer mediation. So I was one of the peer mediators for the school. So if there were any conflicts or anything like that, I was one of the ones that was trained to try to help folks work out their challenges. Yeah. Okay. Uh, were you a hall monitor? I was not a hall monitor. I asked that because I, I was a hall monitor and, and, you know, some of the things that you talk about uh, with, with those experiences, I was picked on all the time, mm. you know, and I just got, I actually became pretty good at rhythm back, you know, okay. but, you know, they always would pick on me still to this day. I got, I got, I got a buddy sitting next to me to pick on me today. Yeah. But, yeah. Um, <laughs> but those are the things that uh, that we want to re uh, the kids can relate to. Um, after you know, it sounds like you had a great experience with your family and your grandmother's involved in your life, which is good. And you left uh, middle school. You went to what high school? I went to Bayview High School. <laughs> okay. um, so at the time, I was interested in becoming an attorney, and uh, Bayview was a law specialty school at the time. So that's where mm -hmm. I ended up. Really. Yeah. Yeah, that is really interesting. So, so interesting. So maybe you had a, a emphasis almost like tech with the trades. Absolutely. So at the time, I think it was law um, and then ROTC. Oh, wow. Yeah. That is wonderful. I mean, I, I also hope that people seeing these videos and be like, hey, let's bring that back. You know? Yeah, right. That. Absolutely. You know? I mean, that's that is beautiful. So having that experience of uh, wanting to go across that track of law, um, what, what inspired you to want to do that at, at such a young age? I'm glad that you asked that question because I know you just said everything was kind of beautiful with my family and everything. <laughs> and the truth of the matter is that it wasn't. Okay. Um, okay. I come from a very dysfunctional family. We had a lot of, uh, you know, issues. The adults in our family had a lot of trauma um, and therefore passed on to us. And um, I have one sister who's six years younger than me. And, and then I have an adopted brother who actually we didn't adopt until I was 21. Um, but uh, abusive background. I came up with a really kind of, like I said, dysfunctional uh, life 
life or family life. Mm -hmm. And I think it was because of that, just wanting to get into a career that I knew could get me out of poverty, mm -hmm. that could get me on a track to kind of redevelop a life for myself that, that I believed that I wanted. And so um, I've always been really good at rationale and being able to think strategically. And so I thought that at the time, law would be a great opportunity to exercise that. Wow. And, you know, that's a beautiful story as well. And I appreciate you sharing that yeah. because, you know, we all have, it's, it's, it's clear that life is not a piece of cake, Absolutely. you know what I'm saying? And, and, and it's, it's what you do with that cake. It's not, it is what it is. It's, it is what you make it. And yeah. You saw and choose, chose to take your, uh, what appeared to be negative and turn it into a positive uh, for as far as your outcomes and where you wanted to go. Absolutely. Uh, and I applaud you for that. Even at a young age, you know, considering that. So, um, you know, when you went there, okay, you're, you're, that's the emphasis, you know, obviously there's other people in the, in the community that's at, at Bayview that's also interested in that, mm -hmm. um, you know, what was that experience like? Was it, you know, and then you're in high school, so you still right. had to, you know, you know, still, you know, picking on people, getting picked right, up. Right, right, right. You know, <laughs> kind of yeah, things, things got a little bit better in high school. So I, you know, it wasn't so bad, I think, as far as the picking on thing. Um, somehow I, I magically became popular in high school. And I don't think I really realized it till I was getting ready to leave. <laughs> <laughs> and everybody was like, no, everyone knows you. I'm like, oh, okay. Um, but yeah, I, there were, there were, it was Bayview at the time was very diverse. So that was, that's something to this day that I still really appreciate. We had black students, white students, Latino students, Asian students, um, a lot of students who came from immigrant families. And so we got a really rich kind of um, opportunity to just engage with a lot of different um, students from a lot of different backgrounds. Okay. Um, and a lot of them were interested in law. A lot of them were interested in, you know, ROTC um, and getting a chance to kind of talk together and, and dream together. Um, was an awesome experience. Um, a handful of us ended up going into uh, Marquette University together. So um, yeah, it was high school. I has, high school was really good. It was okay. really good for me. Yeah, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. So then you, you brought us right into our next question. You went into high school, uh, uh, Marquette University. Uh, obviously, you know, uh, you know, nationally and globally known. Uh, the university here, it's right here in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, mm -hmm. uh, which is beautiful. Just to you know have that track. And, and so I'm assuming that the track was still law. That's why you went to Marquette. So it was. Um, it was still law. I, my uh, thoughts were, so let me back up a little bit. In my um, sophomore year in high school, I got a chance to take part in a um, internship opportunity with, um, at the time it was First Bank. Okay. Uh, now I believe it's uh, US Bank um, after being bought <laughs> a few different times. But so that kind of started my um, career, if you will, in finance. And so um, I worked with First Bank throughout my high school years. Um, and so my thoughts were, you know, I'm really interested kind of in being in that corporate uh, atmosphere, um, maybe corporate law. And so I, my intentions were to go in, get my bachelor's degree in accounting and finance, and then transition into law school. Once I got to college, um, I started off my, my year there um, it was, it was actually a culture shock for me, um, going from, like I said, this diverse background. Sherman Elementary was very diverse. Morris mm -hmm. Middle School was very diverse at the time. Bayview was very diverse. And, and the first time I walked into an accounting class my freshman year, um, 300 students, and I was the only student of color. And I literally sat there on my first day, looked around, and I started crying. Mm. And it was it was interesting because there was this there was a young young Caucasian lady sitting next to me, and she was just like, "Oh, you know what?" She was so concerned because I'm sitting here just tearing and crying in class. We haven't even started class yet, mm. and she's like, "What's going on?" And I remember just looking at her, going, "You wouldn't understand." <laughs> <laughs> um, and that was like the that was a shock for me. It was a shock mm. for my system, and so it really made me start thinking about too, you know, is, is the professional world that I'm looking to go into, is this what I'm really going to have to, to learn how to adapt to, mm -hmm. um, being possibly the only person of color in the room many times. And, um, that, that was a little shaking for me. Mm -hmm. 
Um, but then at the same time, I also went through um, a very deep spiritual experience my freshman year mm -hmm. in high school. And so that's where I, I started connecting with God and really building in my relationship with God um, and just really got to a point where I was literally sitting at the table with a few other friends who were also growing in their relationships with God. And um, I'm hearing them talking about how they prayed about what major they should go into. Um, and it hit me at that moment that I was like, I, I didn't pray. I just mm -hmm. said, this is what I want to do. This mm -hmm. sounds interesting. I think I can make good money in this. This is what I'm going to do. Mm -hmm. And at that moment, I prayed at the table silently as we mm -hmm. were all eating our lunch. And uh, I was like, man, Lord, you know, what would you want me to go into? And mm -hmm. at the time I heard um, education, English and education. And I was like, my first response was like, can't make no money in English and education. <laughs> so I was really resistant to it and um, was making pretty decent grades, mm -hmm. did not change my major right away, got to my um, sophomore year in college, still hadn't changed my major, um, got to my second semester in my sophomore year and really started struggling. And I mean, I'm studying, I'm doing everything that I've always done, putting the time in and my grades just started dropping. And I remember just praying and being like, Lord, what is going on? Like I'm trying my best and it's still kind of falling apart. And he was like, I've given you the opportunity and the ability to be mm -hmm. here and to be successful. Mm -hmm. And I need you to trust me and do what I've asked you to do mm -hmm. because I'm the one that's really given you the power to have that success. Mm -hmm. um, and it hit me like, I need to just be, I need to be obedient and just go ahead and change. So I ended up switching over to English and I, I graduated from Marquette with a degree in English literature. Okay, very good. Yeah. Very good. No, that you know that's incredible, and I think you know just to highlight that point is is trusting in God and being able to, you know, call on Him when you need help and call Absolutely. on Him when things are great as well. You know, yeah. always acknowledging <laughs> God. You know, and and I, I think that's that's going to be you know something that uh, I'm taking away right now. It's just you know even today we always have to have that reminder and say, hey, if you believe, then then trust. You know, yeah. and put forth the effort, and obviously okay. you did that. Those those are great stories, and I'm. I'm sure there's so much more that we're going to learn from you. I'm really looking forward to to part two, part three, part five of, <laughs> of uh, you know uh, your your story. Thank um, you. If you could, after after uh, Marquette, you graduated with your English degree. What was your first job that you had? Um, I was still actually working in finance. So okay. even though I switched my major, um, by this time uh, I was working at um, oh my goodness, what was it at the time? It was another financial institution. I ended up getting a position at Robert W. Baird, ultimately. Okay. Okay. And so um, after I graduated, I was still working at Robert W. Baird. Um, and so I had a, a seven year stint there before okay. I transitioned into something else. Yeah. Okay, okay. very good. Right. That's, and that's, you know, uh, last point, you know, I remember someone telling me my first job saying, you know, I said, I have a degree. What do you mean I have to start, you know, doing, because uh, it was at Budweiser. Yeah, I have to start, yeah. the you know, and she said, close the door, HR, and say, hey, just because you finished college, unless you're a doctor, a lawyer, engineer, yeah. that means you completed it. That's not yeah. taking away anything from it. Yeah, you went yeah. to school, but you, you completed something, and now we're asking you to complete another task. Yeah, and, and so that's 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 brilliant. So after seven years, then you you follow back up with God and say, God, where do you want me to go now? You know. Yeah. So after after um, undergrad, I actually went straight into to my master's program. Right. So I transferred over to UW Milwaukee, and um, you know I I told you that he said English and education. And so this was the education portion of it. So that's where I started my um, studies in education, um, took up my master's in um, adult education okay. at UWM, um, finished that program again, still, still working in finance at the time. Um, and then actually all the way through to my doctorate degree, I ended up going on to a PhD program in urban education with a minor in psychology. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. Well, yeah, that's, yeah. Yeah. We, we, I'm looking forward to, to part five of, of, <laughs> uh, 
So this is really good. So, so uh, please, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, you know, stay tuned. There's more to come. <laughs> there you is know, more. There is more. There's so many details in between, too. Yeah. I, can, I believe it, you know, yeah. and, and uh, but but leaving that to the imagination just for a moment and the anticipation of coming back and hearing something great and how we can follow your footsteps uh, is, is, I think, the way to go. Um, OK, so, you you know, you got this finance. Now you're in education. You got your master. Now you got your doctorate. I mean, you're taking over the world here. And mm -hmm. by following the footsteps and asking God, um, you know, Sylvia, I know you through our engagement with Teens Grow Greens. That's who, that's who you're, you're contracting with now. Yes. Uh, I know, you know, more of your history as far as what you share with me uh, and your family and your success. Um, but if you can tell us, you know, uh, what is your current role? And then where where's what's Sylvia's goal? Where do we want to see Sylvia in the next five years? So um, right now I am um, serving as program director at Teens for Greens. And so this is going on my third year there. Okay. Um, again, we'll save the, the pre-story for another day. Um, <laughs> but um, in, my, in my role there, we're basically, I'm basically overseeing all aspects of programming. Okay. Um, so working on program development for expansion, also working on building and keeping collaborative relationships and partnerships with other organizations and institutions. Um, and it's really awesome because I'm working with young people. I've actually worked with young people for over 20 years in the community in a number of different roles. Yes. Um, and so it's, it's amazing to be able to contribute to their lives and really work on developing rich and developmental programming that will really help them. And really that, again, that stems from a passion from my own background and understanding the needs of young people, um, having that sense of belonging and, and a, a place where they can grow and develop. Um, five years from now, you know, I would really love to have um, healthy, it, it's, so, it's on so many levels. I would love to have neighborhoods that are healthy, okay. filled with families that are healthy, yes. filled with individuals that are healthy. Yes. Um, you know, we have to look at it in both ways. We have to look at how do we help develop young people as well as adults and help them live their best lives and live up to the, their, their fullest potential. But then we also have to work on the environment and the community itself. And what are all the needs of the community um, and making sure that they can live in a space that's equitable, that's sustainable, um, that is nurturing to their own individual needs so they can grow and develop. It's hard to grow and develop in an, in, in an environment where, you know, you don't have food on the table, when you don't have clean water, when you don't have, um, you know, access to, to bettering yourself. Mm -hmm. And so in five years, I would love to have just networks of people and, and uh, organizations working together to literally build health in, mm -hmm. in neighborhoods throughout the city. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Yeah. And we're working on some projects together. We are. We are, which, we are, which I am excited uh, about. Yeah, I am also, uh, Monica, if you can note this, going to bring you into our, uh, and I know we talked about this before, about the sustainable community. And uh, I mean, that's, that's, that is what you're preaching is, you know, we, we're we aligned there and we need to do more uh, uh, to make that happen. You know, this has been uh, really incredible uh, just to uh, get some of these details out of you. <laughs> and uh, like I said, there's more to, to come. Um, if you can give us just some, some immediate advice for some of those uh, fresh out of high school or mm. fresh out of college or even at high school, you know, that relates across the board. I know one that I'm going to, that I've already taken notes and, and I'm going to continue to practice that you share. So I'm, I'm going to take this one from you. Okay, go ahead. You know, calling on God, you know what I'm saying, and relying and trusting you know, that your prayers are heard and yeah. you can follow in those footsteps. But then what else do you have for us as, as those uh, child? Man, I really feel like this kind of ties into that one as well. Um, one of my models in life it actually comes straight from the scripture and it's in all you're getting, get understanding. Um, I think the reason why that I've even from, you know, the level of dysfunction that I've experienced in life gotten to where I am now is because I've always asked why. I've always asked why, you know, all of the negatives, why, you know, there's people that say, you know, you don't ask out why, <laughs> you don't ask, you know, why you're in a particular situation. And I absolutely disagree with that. I feel like every time that I've asked God for understanding, he's given it to me, um, not always immediately, but as I walk through life, you can look back and go, oh, 
oh, now I understand. Um, and so I guess, you know, in all you're getting, get understanding, look for the whys behind what's going on. And even for those that you don't immediately get an answer to, um, I pray that you would trust my words. <laughs> and when I tell you that it will all make sense after a while, um, you know, not all experiences are good experiences, but I do believe God's word when he says that all things work together for the good, for those who love him and are called according to his purpose. And I can only preach that and say that to you right now with confidence because I'm living it. Um, there's lots of things that I've gone through that were very hurtful, that were very painful and challenging. And now, you know, I'm getting to a point in my life where I can look back and go, you know what? It was hurtful. It was painful. It was challenging. But now I'm empowered to do more of what it is that he's calling me to do. And I have that understanding now. So I just want to encourage anyone who's going to be watching this. Um, you know, there may be challenges, there may be pain, um, try to understand, try to get that understanding. Um, sometimes the answers come immediately and sometimes they come further down the line, but just trust, um, that if you're believing in him, it will work together for the good. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Yeah. Silver, this is, again, this is a pleasure. Uh, this is part one. I do, I, and I know we have to close because of the timing, but I do have one, one last question for you. Sure. It sounds like you do a lot of reflection, a lot of evaluation of your daily practices, you know, and, and is that something that, that we can start to, to do and mimic as well? Absolutely. Okay. Um, I think being aware of yourself is huge. Again, this goes back to that understanding piece. If you can understand you, um, you know, there's things around you that have an effect on you, but I do believe that we have the opportunity and the ability to step outside of ourselves and to observe ourselves, observe our minds and our thinking and our patterns of thinking, why we feel or think a certain way about the, the things that we think about, why we feel a certain way, why certain things strike up certain things within us, um, where does that come from? Um, so yes, I think on a daily basis, just as you encounter things, whether it makes you feel good, whether it makes you feel bad, whether it makes you angry or happy or sad or, you know, whatever it is, um, really reflect and, and, and ask yourself, well, where is this coming from? And why do I feel this way? Um, don't just go through life saying, well, it is because it is, or I just think that way because that's just who I am. Really look at, you know, where you come from, you know, how you've been shaped, um, what you've observed that helps you to be who you are today, good, bad, or indifferent, um, because it's that understanding that will help you then continue to improve. That's what's up. That's what's yeah. up. You heard, yeah. it, you heard it first from Sylvia. <laughs> and we won't hear it for the last time. We're going to hear it again. Uh, thank you again for this experience, and, and we will uh, notify you when uh, this is up and, and loaded. Thank you. I appreciate the opportunity. It's a blessing. No problem. Talk to you soon, Sylvia. All right. Talk to you, too. Bye-bye.